The subject of this lecture is introduction to solid modeling. Then we will look at particular solid models in more detail. As you remember, surfaces have dimensionality too. Now it is time to go one dimension of shape higher. We will characterize representational schemes, especially the notion of abstract solid needs clarification. Then we will go through the list of multiple existing schemes for solids, including such as constructive solid geometry, sweeps and boundary representations. Finally, some time will be devoted to hybrid schemes and solid modeling systems. This figure shows kind of time chart of the historical development of approaches to 3D object representation. We can see that the process started in mid-60s by 2D drawing systems using straight lines and curves, wireframes. Then the models developed into 3D polygonal and sculptured surfaces, and finally to solid models in industrial prototype solid modeling systems of mid-80s. To begin with solid models, we need to look in more detail to a typical solid modeling structure. Following the description of Rakisha, we can say that solid modeling system has four primary components. Simple structures, which represent solid objects. These simple structures are called solid object representations. Processes, which answer geometric questions, such as what is the volume? using the symbol structures. Input facilities for creating and editing object representation. Output facilities. And representations of result. Let us find the mentioned components of the solid modeling system on this scheme. It is obvious that the core of the system are geometric models in the form of symbolic structures. They are created by input facilities by definition translator. The geometric queries and processes, which answer geometric questions, are shown in the lower left corner. Output facilities and results are shown at the right slide. Solid modeling system, or simply the solid modeler, is a subsystem surrounded by the dashed line rectangle, which provides entering, storing, and modifying object representation. We need to understand more clearly what is an idea. Rigid motions, or operations that add or remove material using set theoretic operations, must produce another solid. Finite describability. There must be some finite aspect of three-dimensional models of solids to make them representable in computers. Boundary determinism. The boundary of a solid must determine unambiguously what is inside the solid. Look at the slide. M is modeling space. It is the space of all possible sets. The main is a subset of M. R is space of syntactically correct representations, symbol structures. V is a subset of the set R. S is a mapping of D to B, meaning that for any element of D, solid object, there is only one corresponding symbolic structure from V, representation. The mapping S is called the representational scheme. It establishes a correspondence between a solid object and its model. The main of S practically means those solids which a specific scheme S can represent. Our set is a formalized model of an abstract solid. Suitable models for solids are R sets that are bounded, closed, regular, and semi-analytic subsets of three-dimensional Euclidean space. A bounded set occupies a finite portion of space. The set is closed if it contains its boundary. Imagine a solid ball and remove its surface, sphere, or its portion, skin or ring. Such an object is not a closed set. It is a closed set on the slide. 
it contains its boundary. It is not a regular set, because its boundary has dangling portions that are not adjacent to the set's interior. The set is regular if we take any boundary point and its any neighborhood contains boundary and internal points. This set is not semi-analytic because its top face is ill-behaved, it oscillates infinitely as it approaches the left face. Numerically, impossible to distinguish boundary internal and external points near the line x is equal to zero. Semi-analytic set means a set with good behavior. Syntactically correct representations are finite simple structures constructed according to syntactical rules. The collection of all syntactically correct representations is called a representation space R. Abstract solids, R sets, are the elements of a mathematical modeling space M. These formal definitions will be illustrated in the following scheme. In this lecture, we will give characteristics to many representation schemes. To do this, we will use four formal properties and several informal properties. The formal properties are domain, validity, completeness, and uniqueness. Domain D was defined for the above scheme as a set of solids. The domain is the set of solids representable in the representation scheme or its descriptive power. When we describe a domain for some representation, we are trying to answer the question, which solids can be represented in the scheme? Validity. A scheme is valid if a simple structure which corresponds to a nonsense object does not exist. Validity check has to reply the question, does a representation correspond to at least one object in the domain? If the validity is not checked, computation on invalid model is meaningless and often causes system crashes. Completeness, non-ambiguity. Does a valid representation correspond to only one object in the domain? A representation R belonging we is unambiguous if it corresponds to a single object in D, upper image. It is ambiguous if it corresponds to two or more objects in D, lower image. A scheme is complete or unambiguous if all of its valid representations are unambiguous. Non-ambiguity or ambiguity property is known for each representation scheme. Non-ambiguity or completeness is crucial for the automatic computation of properties of the represented objects. The next property is uniqueness. A scheme is unique if for one object there is one and only one model representation. See the upper illustration. The scheme is non-unique if one object can have two or more models. Lower image. Representational schemes, which are both unambiguous, complete, and unique, are highly desirable because they are one-to-one -one mappings. For each representation scheme in this lecture, we will try to describe the following informal properties. Conciseness replies to the question how large are the representations. This refers to the size of representations in a scheme, proportional to required memory. Compare. Typed equation can take 20 bytes and polygonal model of the same object 20 megabytes. Representations in verbose schemes consume large amounts of memory and are difficult to transmit rapidly in distributed environments. Ease of creation answers the question how hard is to construct a valid representation. Concise representations generally are easier to create. Input subsystems are needed to help users to create representations. 
representations in verbose schemes with complex validity conditions are difficult to construct, especially by humans. The last informal property is suitability for applications. Are there good application algorithms that operate on the representations of the scheme? For example, Roman numbers are not convenient for arithmetic operations. In solid modeling, no single representation is uniformly best. Experience shows that representation schemes are not uniformly suitable for all applications. Many modeling systems use multiple representation schemes and convert between them as needed, depending on the specific computations they support. Multiple representations are suitable for general-purpose solid modeling systems. We start the survey of representation schemes from ambiguous schemes. In the ambiguous scheme, one representation can describe more than one object. So we actually do not know what solid we are dealing with at the moment. The first and well-known scheme, widely used in practice by human modelers, are engineering drawings, drafts. However, they cannot be used as computer representation. There is even no formal definition of drawings as a representation scheme. More formal schemes corresponding to drawing are collections of planar projections, where the mapping to a three solids is needed, but not completely formalized. Second type of an ambiguous scheme is a suitable collection of 3D entities. Selection of edges leads to well-known wireframe representations. Please look at the wireframe in this figure. It can surely define many different solids. We can suppose that all the lines belonging to the surface of some solid, but this representation does not have any information about surface faces. In fact, they can behave as they want, making different solids all the time. Measurements of physical solids also can serve as object models. A solid is represented by a set of coordinates of points lying on the boundary or inside the object. This is typical data received from 3D scanners. The step of surface reconstruction makes some assumptions about the surface. Degree of surface polynomial by quadrico cubic degree of smoothness. Thus, producing different results, for example, B and C in this figure. So, this representation scheme is ambiguous. Pure primitive instancing means that we deal with the system which has only primitive instancing and no other modeling capabilities. Pure primitive instancing was used in early CAD systems. The modeling system defines a set of primitive, three-dimensional solid shapes for the specific application area. Primitive with parameters define a family of parts. Primitives may include complex objects, geo, bolts, etc. For example, we can see here two geos, defined by primitive instancing. A generic geo is described in the system with five parameters. Then we assign specific values to these parameters and get the left geo instance in the picture. Then we change the parameters and obtain another right instance. A system based on primitive instancing has the following features. It has no operations to form a new, more complex object. It is possible to make new instancing of predefined objects. There is only one way to create a new kind of object, to write the code that defines it. If we add a new object, programs to draw or to calculate mass properties must be written individually for every primitive. Primitive instancing as a representation scheme is unambiguous because one set of parameters defines one solid. Unique because for a solid only one set of parameters exists. Concise and easy to validate. This representation is very concise because it needs only index of primitive and parameter values.
for double precision each 8 bytes. 5 parameters multiply 8 is equal to 40 plus 1 integer number for primitive index 2 bytes. Total 42 bytes. If parameters of representation are valid, then presentation is valid. Informally, primitive instancing is easy to use. If the user knows the primitives and the meaning of their parameters, no problem to make an instance by assigning specific values to the parameters. Domains are small enough to be covered by a small catalog of primitives with small number of parameters. Not so many types of primitives are chosen for the purpose to keep a system specialized. It is also efficient in specific applications, but allow no uniform treatment. It works only in the narrow area. Example Greta Gears. Cell decomposition is a representation of solids by parameterized set of primitive cells. For example, cells can be tetrahedral cubes, prisms, but often can be curved objects. Complex objects are constructed by gluing cells together. Restrictions on the glue operation often require that two cells share a single point age of phase. Let us discuss the properties of this representation. Representation is not unique. There are several possible cell decompositions for one solid. In this example, with two cells, the complex object, the right one, can be constructed at least in two different ways shown in B and in C. The cubic cell shown in A may be transformed from a cube to a rectangular block to construct the object shown in B. The representation is unambiguous. If some specific set of cells is selected and they are glued together, then it defines only one solid. Validity of a cell decomposition is computationally expensive to check. It is not concise, especially then a certain accuracy has to be provided. Then the number of cells grows fast. The decomposition is not easy to create. Still, in some critical applications, people are doing cell decompositions by hands. But it is very hard task and special software is needed for decomposition of modeled solids. This representation scheme is convenient for computing some topological properties. For example, one-piece detection connectivity. It is the answer for the question if the solid is one piece or it has disjoint components. Another topological query can be checking the existence of voids, entire cave or holes. Cell decomposition is used in 3D finite element methods for the numerical solution of differential equations, for example, heat transfer, plasticity and stress analysis. Special occupancy enumeration is a special case of cell decomposition with identical cells arranged in a fixed regular grid. The cells are often called voxels. The most common cell type is the cube, and the representation of space as a regular array of cubes is called a voxel array. We can see here a voxelized torus in the image as a typical example of this representation. For every cell, only its presence or absence in the grid is defined. A cell is presented in the grid if it is occupied by the object. The disadvantages of this representation are it is an approximate model and it does not support a concept of partial occupancy. This representation is memory consuming. Spatial occupancy enumeration is unambiguous. A set of voxels defines one solid as a set of small cubes. However, if the application is working with smooth boundaries, then the situation is possible that one representation corresponds to several solid models. It means, from the application point of view, the representation is ambiguous. It is a unique representation for a solid only one set of voxels with the given grid step exists. The representation is easy to validate. In the bit, 
we have here only 1 on 0. There is actually nothing to check. The only problem can be with proper definition of grid size values or bounding box information. It is not concise of verbs. Typical voxel array now is 512 cubed voxels. It requires a lot of memory. It is efficient in applications where objects are box-like or extremely irregular. In the last case, no any other model can describe such an object. We have arrived to three main representations in modern commercial systems – constructive solid geometry, sweeps and boundary representations. Constructive solid geometry, abbreviated as CSG, is one of the main representations of solids based on a set of three-dimensional solid primitives and regularized set theoretic operations. Traditional primitives of a CSG system are block, cylinder, cone, sphere, torus. Standard operations include union, intersection, difference plus translation, and rotation. A complex solid is represented with a binary tree, usually called CSG tree. Don't be surprised, please, these trees are growing with root up and leaves down. A typical binary structure includes the root purple, nodes pink orange, and yellow leaves. In the case of the CSG tree, the root represents the resulting complex object. The nodes contain operations and the leaves contain primitives. If a node represents a linear operation, for example translation or rotation, such a node has only one child subtree, operation 4 in this example. All nodes with set operations have two children. Here they are, operations 1, 2 and 3. Now, when the general terms of CSG are given, we can summarize properties of this representation scheme. The domain, what kind of solids this scheme can represent, of CSG, depends on the set of primitives and on the set of operations. Two CSG schemes shown in figures A and B have different primitives, but the same domain. It means that we can construct one set of primitives from another set of primitives. In this sense, they are equivalent. But if, for example, we add a torus to one of the groups, its domain will become much wider. This scheme is unambiguous because a CSG tree defines one solid. This representation scheme is non-unique. There are several possible CSG trees for one solid. Regarding the validity, any syntactically correct CSG tree is valid if the primitives are R sets. It means that if no basic rule is broken, for example, all set theoretic operations are given to children subtrees, the tree is syntactically correct and the representation of this specific model is valid. There is an exception. With unbounded primitives, one can construct an acceptable bounded solid, then the tree is invalid. In general, CSG tree requires small memory for its storage. It is especially concise if primitives are well matched to the domain. Building a cube from spheres, of course, doesn't make a small CSG tree. Humans can easily create CSG representations because it is reflected one-to-one -one in the operations, user actions, of graphical user's interface. CSG is efficient for rendering and computing integral properties, calculation of solids volume or mass. Not efficient for line drawings and certain types of graphic interactions, pick an age for example, because there is no mesh involved in CSG modeling and it needs to be generated if one wants line drawing or mesh editing. The next representation scheme is the sweep representation, or simply sweeping. A set of all points visited by an object A 
moving along a trajectory B, see the top image, is a new solid called a sweep. In translational sweeping or extrusion, 2D area moves along a line orthogonal to the plane of the area. In this small animation, the non-regular area is moving along the axis X and sweeps a three-dimensional solid. Rotational sweeping is defined by rotating an area A about an axis B, left image. Here we also can see the animation. Sweeps with a generating area changes in size, shape or orientation and following an arbitrary curved trajectory are called generalized cylinders. Example of a generalized cylinder where the area changes its shape during the motion from a disk to a triangle is shown. As you could notice, in translational or rotational sweeps and even in generalized cylinders, the generation area is planar, two-dimensional solid. However, three-dimensional solids also can move in space and sweep some other solids. This problem is called sweeping by moving solid, and it is much harder. Other problems of sweeping are self-intersections of sweeps and making CSG operations on swept solids. This representation is unambiguous, meaning that a moving object and a trajectory define only one solid. It is non-unique because one object can be obtained in two or more different ways. General validity conditions for sweep representations are not known. General sweeping may produce non-regular sets. In the picture, the generator is an arc A with an attached segment. Then moving the arc A in the direction B, the resulting sweep has a dangling edge shown here. It is very hard to detect such a problem only from given generator and translation direction. The main applications of sweeping by a moving solid is simulation material removal, numerically controlled NC machining or NC fabrication, and dynamic interference of solids, for example, using sweeping in collision detection in robotics. Sweeping by a moving solid lacks known algorithms for computing properties, for example, volume, mass, and so on. The boundary representation is now dominating commercial cut and animation systems. Let us consider an example, a boundary representation for a cube. A solid can be represented by its boundary surface. To define a boundary surface, one can introduce points, vertices, curves, edges, and surface patches, faces, and stitch them together. See the figure. This boundary representation, or B-Rep, has two parts. Right part on the finger. Topological information on the connectivity of vertices, edges, and faces. And geometric information embedding these boundary elements in three-dimensional space. Topological information specifies incidences and adjacents of boundary elements. Geometric information specifies coordinates of vertices or the equations of the surfaces containing the faces. Thus, the face F1 is bounded by edges from E1 to E4, as it's shown in the graph at the right side. The edge E1 is bounded by the vertices V1 and V2, and so on. Domains of B-Rep are as rich as those of cell decomposition or CSG schemes. If we are given a CSG scheme, it is always possible to design a B-Rep scheme with the same domain. These days, B-Rep is applied in many different areas, from architecture 
to gaming and it is de facto standard for solid modeling, unfortunately. It is unambiguous if faces are represented unambiguously. As illustrated in these two pictures, a purple cube or an orange cylinder can be represented by many different B reps. It means this representation is not unique. Validity of B rep is a huge problem because of cracks between faces control requires expensive calculations. B reps are not concise at all. B rep files are about 10 to 1000 times bigger than corresponding CSG. Complex B reps are difficult for humans to construct. This representation is efficient in line and shaded drawings and also good for graphical interaction, for example, age selection and moving, and topological applications, for example, to calculate the solid genius using older Poincare formula. This is a summary table from Rikisha's paper of representations in properties and applications. The schemes are listed by rows. As you can see from the table, the list of representation schemes in 1980 was not so long. The next similar table made in 1995 by Hilbert Walker already has five new representations. Thus, new representations listed by Walker in 1995 are medial axes, array representations, parametric sample sets, parametric function representations, and real function representations. We'll discuss some of them in the remainder of the lecture. The medial axis representation of a 2D object is defined as the closure of the locus of centers of maximal inscribed disks. A disk is maximal if no other disk contains it. A disk is inscribed in the shape if it touches the boundary at least in two points. Centers of such disks are not randomly placed inside the shape. They lie on a set of curves, one-dimensional objects. But this set of curves, or locus, of centers is called a medial axis. In the example, an L-shaped domain and its medial axis are shown. There are also three of maximal inscribed circles contributing to the medial axis also shown. Important thing is that the medial axis with the so-called radius information defines the shape unambiguously. The idea of this representation is to compress 2D information into 1D information with less memory. The compression not always can be achieved, but always reduce the dimension of shape by one. In the shown example, six segments of L shape can be described by coordinates easily than by medial axis. The medial surface, drawn in red in the picture of a 3D solid, is the closure of the locus of centers of maximal inscribed spheres. For a three-dimensional solid, the medial axis is a collection of surface patches and curves. For a torus, medial axis is circle. In the shown example, the original solid is a rectangular block or a parallel pipette. The medial axis shown in red includes nine quadrangles and four triangular faces. It is complex, non-manifold, because for some ages one age belongs to three faces. Another example. The original solid is a super ellipsoidal block A, and its skeleton B consists of different surface patches C. Please note, the skeletal medial surface is similar to the previous rectangular block but most of pitches are curved, not planar. The next very colorful example illustrates the process of generation of medial surfaces. For now, the best algorithms are working with point clouds. So, the initial surface, left column, is converted to a cloud of points, central column, and then a medial surface, right column, is constructed from the cloud data.
Properties of the medial axis representation. A given medial axis with the radius information defines only one solid. And opposite is also true. For one solid, there is only one medial axis representation. Thus, this representation scheme is both unambiguous and unique, because it provides one-to-one -one mapping between the solids and their representations. The practical problem is that it is hard to both get the medial axis for the solid and to reconstruct the solid back from the medial axis. Medial axis is efficiently used in construction of finite element meshes. Our next topic is the ray representation of solids. Ray representations is the next in a long queue of possible ones. The basis of this representation is a ray grid, which is a finite set of regularly spaced parallel lines with an associated direction as shown on the slide. A ray representation of a solid is a set of segments resulting from the intersection of the ray grid with the solid. In this two-dimensional example, the ray grid and the two-dimensional shape are shown at the left. Then, set intersection is applied between each ray and their shape. The resulting ray representation is shown at the right. A ray wrap might also contain tags, descriptive symbolic information, a pendant to the segment. Tags can identify the primitive half spaces in solids CSG or faces in its B wrap. The tag at each segment and point has the identifier and parameters for the primitive it intersected. Properties of the ray representation are as follows. The authors of the ray representation claimed that it is unambiguous, meaning that under suitable conditions and with appropriate takes it can be converted exactly from AND to CSG and BREP. The representation is not unique because it depends on grid spacing, distance between the rays. In the parametric function representations, shape are represented by multidimensional continuous piecewise differentiable parametric functions f, defining mapping from n-dimensional to m-dimensional space. Where n-dimensional space is called parameter space r sub n and m-dimensional r sub m is object space. For example, with n equals 2 and m equals 3, the shown three parametric functions x, y, z of two variables u and v define a surface in 3D space. The image illustrates the level of complexity which can be achieved by this representation. Even from these images we can see that the objects look like generalized cylinders. In fact, this representation is extension and generalization of sweeping, so its properties are similar to sweeping. It is an ambiguous, non-unique representation. If function is defined, it corresponds to one object. It is non-unique because there are many functions defining the object. Functions are usually given in some procedural form, and therefore the representation is compact easy to create because the process is performed on high level of abstraction. Efficient and powerful algorithms can be made with the use of interval analysis. In the interval arithmetics, each value is represented not by one number but by the interval which the value belongs to. When we apply operations to such interval values, again, an interval is generated. It is possible to get guaranteed solutions for many numerical problems, such as zero-root search. Real function representations is one of the newest and powerful classes. This representation corresponds to the approach to defining point set using a point membership rule. The rule here is given by the single continuous real function of point coordinates, and the point 
belongs to the solid if the function value is not negative. If compared with constructive solid, in addition to the point membership classification, it gives a distance measure from the point to the solid. A function f can be defined analytically with an evaluation algorithm or with sampled values and an appropriate interpolation procedure. This gives flexibility in the object definition and allows to include different modeling styles. The picture shows a variety of a free-form objects modeled in this representation and fabricated using a rapid prototyping machine or simply a three-dimensional printer. More formally, the function representation can be defined as a uniform representation of multidimensional objects defined by a continuous function. The function value is calculated at any given point by an evaluation procedure traversing the construction tree structure with leaves containing primitives and nodes containing operations. One of the fundamental features is system extensibility, meaning that neither the set of primitives nor the set of operations are fixed and can be extended depending on the application area. This is a tree for the 4D space-time metamorphosis object. The left subtree is for the constructive solid, and the right subtree is for the blobby object. An additional node at the bottom defines the metamorphosis operations. Let us characterize the function representation. It is closed under the arithmetic, set theoretic, Cartesian product, projection, and other operations. It means that each operation yields a new real function describing its result. The abstraction level is higher than that of other known representations because combinations of the following modeling styles are supported. CSG, sweeping, implicit, volumetric, and procedural object. This representation is unambiguous because the function defines one point set. It is not unique, for example, the function k times f, where k is a positive real number, defines the same object as the function f, because multiplication by a positive constant does not change the function sign. However, if we limit the representation to a signed Euclidean distance function, then we get a unique representation because for every point set in Euclidean space, the distance function is unique. A typical representation is given in analytic or procedural form, so it is concise and easy to create, similar to the parametric function representation. It is especially efficient in modeling highly complex objects, not achievable for other representations. Finally, some time will be devoted to hybrid schemes and solid modeling systems. It is obvious that there is no single representation which could be the best for solving all application problems. Because of this, at the early stages of solid modeling, an idea of a hybrid or non-homogeneous representation schemes was introduced. They may be designed by combining several schemes and providing convergence between them. Examples of such hybrid schemes are the following. The first one, CSG and boundary hybrid. CSG-like trees, whose leaves are primitive solids or BREP non-primitive solids. This hybrid representation is used as the basis for the input language of some systems. CSG and sweep hybrid representation has CSG-like trees, those leaves may be solid sweep representations. This hybrid is useful in numerical controlled machining and computer vision. The scheme in the slide shows non-exact conversions of other representations to BREP and approximate conversions via point membership classification to special enumerations of other different representations. 
as we could see from the previous scheme, only spatial numeration and BREP have bidirectional exact conversions. The reasons that such conversions are not available for other representations are the following. At first, schemes such as sweeps have a smaller domain than CSG, BREP or cell decompositions. So, the conversions from CSG to BREP or sweeps are simply not possible. The second reason is that conversional algorithms are simply not known. Another important thing to note that the exact conversions from CSG to BREP, so-called boundary evaluation, requires non-trivial algorithms and the opposite conversion, BREP to CSG, is still a research topic. Earlier, a scheme of a solid modeling system was given. Here, it is the same scheme given in more detail, taking into account the idea of hybrid representations. The core solid modeler supports a specific collection of representations, exact, approximate, auxiliary, with at least one being valid and complete. Auxiliary representations can be temporarily generated to answer some specific query. The system also supports a collection of procedures for managing representations, conversions and other geometrical calculations shown as arrows in the scheme. Externally acceptable procedures are included in application program interface for users' application programs. Let us reiterate what kind of applications can be built on the top of a solid modeling system. They include computer graphics system, visualization and animation systems, mass properties calculations, finite element meshing, interference checking and path planning, mechanism simulation, rapid prototyping, manufacturing, data storage and exchange. Note that not all of them need to generate images. As simple examples, we can consider a single representation system based on a BREP and a hybrid CSG BREP system. For the shown single BREP system, all input models are immediately converted to BREP and the system operates only with BREPs. A different hybrid scheme has two major representations, CSG and BREP, and provides a conversion from CSG to BREP. Also, applications can get both representations as system output. The example is AutoCAD release 12. This table summarizes the early history of solid modeling systems by year 1982, their representation schemes, domains and interface styles. I want to draw your attention to British BREP systems Build 2 and Romulus, French Euclid BREP system, existing in some form until now. CSG systems developed in Japan called TIPS and developed in US system called PADL2, also served as prototypes for new CSG systems. Here we give a short list of more late and modern systems. A kernel modeler means a library or classes or application program interface API providing a basic level of solid modeling. There are BREP kernel modelers, such as Parasolid, which is a development of Romulus, ACIS, a development of Build, but now it is in the US, and DesignBase, an original Japanese system. CVLIS is a CSG kernel modeler, which recently turned into open source software. The next class is BREP based interactive modeling systems. CATIA based on Euclid, AutoCAD based on ACIS, SOLIDWORKS interactive system based on Parasolid. We also need to mention CSG-based hybrid systems, such as Hardware Ray Casting Engine RCE, a parallel special purpose computer based on CSG and RayRap hybrid representation. The well-known Paul Ray 
Modeling and Rendering System has CSG and BREP Hybrid Modeler for photorealistic rendering. Another interesting system is BRL CAD, which is CSG Solid Modeling System with BREP expert capabilities. It is developed by US Army and has been released to open source recently. There are, I think, already known for you FREP based systems. You probably worked with Hyperfun in one of your laboratory works. The book by Foley provides a survey on solid modeling. Here is the list of references to key publications on solid modeling in chronological order starting from 1980. Today some a good phrase by Dr. Johnson to remember. We are geometricians only by chance.